blessed with a planet which is pulsating with life. The species we have discovered so far are but a mere fraction of all the abundant life that makes Earth its home. Chotu, what are you up to? Look at him, Dadaji. He is trying to catch that bug. Sorry, Chotu. You don't have wings like that bug. It can easily fly away from you. Oh no, that little bug has got stuck in that spider's web and the spider inside the web is using its legs to wrap the bug with silk coming out of its body. The poor bug has now turned into a neat package wrapped in silk. Ah, that spider mustn't be hungry, otherwise it would have eaten up the bug right away. It has saved the bug for a rainy day. And look, who is sitting up there on the tree branch? Golden Oriole! Is it waiting for its chance to grab the spider and its bug package and gulp them both down? I think it is frightened of Chotu. The bird is waiting for Chotu to move away. You are right, Kunti. Dadaji, I just thought of something. There seems to be some form of life everywhere I look. I wonder if anybody has counted how many different species we have on Earth. You are right. Our Earth is bursting with life. Do you know, according to Discovery Channel, so far, Scientists have discovered 8.75 million animal species here on Earth. Even though many species are becoming extinct all the while, there are yet so many species to be discovered deep down in the oceans where sunlight cannot penetrate and it is very difficult for man to reach. In the remote swampy jungles, where it is almost impossible to walk, high up in the tallest mountains, where the air is so thin, and all that life exists in a very thin layer around the earth, the biosphere. Biosphere? You have told me all about the atmosphere. But what is this new sphere? Bio means living. I know. So is biosphere where all life exists? Shabash! The biosphere is the place on the earth and around the earth where life can exist. And do you know it has existed for 3.5 billion years. Hey, yo! So, life can be in the oceans and all other water bodies. Together called hydrosphere. Or, it can be in the solid part of the Earth's crust called lithosphere. Or in the atmosphere. That makes up so much of the earth. And yet, you say it is only a thin layer around the earth. Kaise? How? That is because not all parts of the lithosphere or hydrosphere or atmosphere contain life. It is only some portion of the lithosphere up to a depth of 5 kilometers or so, which contains life. In the atmosphere too, only the first layer, the troposphere, has life. Can there be life in the volcanoes also, Dadaji? Ha! Ah, 
मैं क्या कहूँ यू नो देर आर बैक्टीरिया लिविंग इवन इन द हॉट स्प्रिंग्स ऑफ द फेमस येलो स्टोन नेशनल पार्क इन अमेरिका वेर ग्राउंड वाटर एज हॉट एज एटी सेवन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड गश इज आउट देर आर बैक्टीरिया thriving deep inside the mariana trench too the deepest point in the earth's oceans and as if that is not enough life has also been found thriving in the siberian permafrost which is more than 5 million years old what is a permafrost it is a thick layer of soil that remains frozen throughout the year did you hear that chotu but dada ji all that is living needs the non living components in the biosphere too plants need soil particles to anchor them and provide them with minerals for growth we all need oxygen to breathe so both the living and non living components in the biosphere are required to interact with each other isn't it bilkul sahi there is a very strong interaction between the living or biotic and the non living or abiotic components but dada ji there is so much variation from place to place in the flora and fauna within the biosphere no yes kunti in fact the biosphere can be divided into five different biomes <laughs> i can see that your eyes are becoming bigger and bigger with wonder you are wondering what biomes are yes i want to know what is this biome is it another kind of home and where are the five homes or biomes my dear kunti you are almost correct a biome is a large community of flora and fauna that live in a vast habitat let me see how many biomes you can think of dada ji you are quizzing me I think the biomes could be forests, grasslands, deserts, all the water bodies. I can only think of four biomes. Good, good. You are absolutely correct about these four biomes. The fifth biome, I don't blame you for not knowing. It is the tundra biome. Those places that are extremely cold and are covered in ice almost all the year round is iceland in the tundra biome not only iceland but also other places like alaska a part of canada greenland and scandinavia places close to the north pole and also in antarctica around the south pole it is so cold that water tends to freeze to ice that is why trees do not grow there only a few plants like moss fern and lichen grow during the summer ayo and what about animals there are animals too like the polar bear the musk ox arctic fox the caribou or reindeer and snowy owl many of them migrate to the warmer regions during the bitterly cold winters and isn't this where the people get to see the northern lights if they are near the north pole and the southern lights if they are near the south pole The tundra must be so different from where we live. No trees, bitterly cold all the year round. Chotu, 
I don't think you would like it there. No squirrels for you to chase up the trees. Dadaji, the biosphere seems to be getting more and more interesting. <laughs> Look, even Chotu agrees. He is wagging his tail happily as if he too now knows all about the biosphere. I have only told you about the tundra biome. The other biomes are also very interesting. Yes, yes. I would love to hear their stories, Dadaji. Let's begin with the rainforests, which receive a lot of rain. We have the tropical rainforests that grow in countries close to the equator in Central and South America, in Central Africa, in Western India, in Southeast Asia in New Guinea and in parts of Australia. What do these forests look like? They have broad leaves and are very tall trees, as tall as 250 feet. The barks of these trees are covered with moss and lichen, as it is very humid there, and their dense canopies Make it rather shady underneath. Does that mean the sunlight cannot reach lower down? Bilkul sahi. Under the canopy level, other plants like climbers, orchids and ferns, which are shade-loving, grow. These forests are home to lots and lots of species of plants and animals. So many of the plants are used in medicines. That means they are extremely valuable to us and to the biosphere. You speak very wisely, my child. The largest of these rainforests is the Amazon rainforest. It is 6 million square kilometers. That means so many animals, birds, reptiles, insects and fish must be living inside, no? Bilkul sahi. But sadly, so much of the forest is being wiped out every day to give way to agriculture and construction work. Without their homes, so many species too, are becoming extinct. What about the forests in our own country? Here too, we have the forests of the Western Ghats, which also has a lot of biodiversity. The Southern Western Ghats forests are being cut down for timber and replaced by coffee and tea gardens. Since the forests are home to the lion-tailed macaque, a very shy monkey which only lives in treetops, this animal too may become extinct if it loses its home. What about other kinds of forests, Dadaji? I am coming to that. We have the coniferous forest. In the Himalayas, these trees are conical in shape and have leaves that are like needles so that the snow that falls there can easily slide off. They bear seeds in cones instead of fruits. And up there in the Himalayas, there are many forests of Deodhar a tree of the gods. Which animals are found there? Here too, there are animals like the pine martens, marmots and birds like the brilliantly coloured monal pheasant and the western tragopan. My master ji also said that the Himalayas are called the abode of bliss. 
These forests must be so beautiful. Indeed, they are. In contrast to these forests are the thorn forests that have thorny trees. These forests are found in the northern parts of the country like Haryana, Rajasthan and Gujarat. Are the trees in these forests adapted to grow in dry conditions? Absolutely. That is why their roots grow deep into the ground in search of groundwater. The most common tree in the thorn forests of India is the Khejri tree. It is a favorite of the Bishnoi community. of Rajasthan who worship nature and consider it as part of their religion to protect these trees what about other kinds of forest dada ji <laughs> it makes me really happy to see how keen you are to learn about things yes there is yet another kind of forest very different from the other ones i have told you about so far the mangrove forests what are they do they have mangoes <laughs> no no not at all mangrove trees grow inside the rivers or creeks or even in the sea in the intertidal zone between the line up to which the water comes in during high tide to the line where the water recedes during low tide huh inside the sea yes these trees are adapted to survive in the harshest of conditions they have special stilt roots that come out from their trunk like a skirt to ensure that the trees do not topple over by the force of the moving water some mangrove trees also have roots growing upwards jutting out of the soil like many pencils why do those roots grow upwards like so many standing pencils dada ji I want you to think why the soil in which the mangrove trees grow also has a lot of water right Is it that the soil doesn't have air for the roots to breathe because it has so much water Do those roots coming out of the soil have holes in them like our nostrils to help us breathe Shabash full marks Those pencil roots and also the stilt roots have holes like our nostrils to help the roots breathe. But Dada ji, what about all the salt in the sea and creek water? How do the mangroves tolerate that? Smart question. The mangrove leaves have special glands on their leaves. which exclude any salt that the tree roots may have absorbed that is why those leaves will taste salty other mangrove tree roots just do not allow the salt to enter them but how do mangrove forests help us dada ji they are most useful to us as they absorb five times more carbon dioxide than land plants also they are the soldiers of the shore their dense roots break the force of strong winds and waves and protect the coastal lands from cyclones and storms ayyo i must tell you this The largest mangrove forest in the whole world is the Sundarbans lying across West Bengal and Bangladesh. 
it is the only place where tigers are seen to swim across the wide creeks wow one day i would like to go there another story dada ji let's go to the grasslands did you know grasslands may not give off as much oxygen as forests but they are habitats for many different animals there are grasslands almost everywhere but the grasslands of america parts of europe and northern asia are different from the grasslands of africa and southern parts of asia and australia are they different because of the difference in climate so even the animals that make them their homes may vary in the different grasslands right dada ji bilkul sahi but again the same story grasslands are very often burnt down to make way for growing crops where do the poor animals living there go in india the cheetah went extinct because of the loss of grasslands and now the great indian bustard which lives in the grasslands of rajasthan and maharashtra is in grave danger too did you hear that chotu we have to save the grasslands we have to save our biosphere in the northeast in assam we also have the tall elephant grass where live not only elephants but also the one horned rhinos chotu would get completely hidden from view there in the elephant grass dada ji master ji was telling us about the savannas of africa do many animals live there are ha and it is a great sight to watch thousands and thousands of wildebeest and zebra migrate twice a year from one part of the savanna to another and back in search of more grass to graze on and water wow i can just imagine the drumming sound of their galloping hooves and the dust flying everywhere dada ji now that you have told me so many stories about the tundra forests and grasslands what about the hot deserts they are the hottest biomes with hardly any rainfall isn't it true that is why there is very little vegetation there what grows are mostly cacti whose leaves are reduced to spines and succulent plants that store water in their stems but though the days are hot the nights can be quite cold where are the deserts dada ji the sahara in africa is the largest desert in the world in india too we have the thar desert partly in rajasthan and partly in punjab sindh and pakistan in such a dry place with hardly any vegetation are there any other animals besides camels yes even in such desolate places there are the indian wild asses desert foxes lizards desert cats eagles we are so lucky to have so much life here on our planet but our oceans along with so many other water bodies on land rivers and lakes have so much more life it is unimaginable so much of it has yet to be discovered not only that but the oceans produce more than half of the world's oxygen 
the biodiversity in the vast oceans must be varying so much from place to place na bilkul the marine life around the sea coast is very different from the life found in the high seas also as you go deeper and deeper in the ocean the sunlight decreases until you reach a depth where it is very dark here you will find very different kind of life many of them give off bioluminescent light wow did you hear that chotu aur ek ajeeb baat if our tallest mountain mount everest which is 29032 feet were to be placed in the deepest part of the world's ocean the mariana trench it would not even reach the surface of the water the trench is 35802 feet so deep ha huh. but now this biggest biome also needs our help besides so much pollution the sea level is rising day by day as global warming is causing the huge glaciers in the arctic and the antarctic to melt very rapidly the rising seas are submerging so many islands and also the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide is making the oceans acidic that can harm the marine life isn't it in so many places the beautiful colorful corals are dying and becoming bleached corals i shall make posters about our beautiful biomes and put them up all over town these are the posters that kunti made please plant more trees to absorb the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide so that global warming is no more grasslands are homes for so many animals they should not be burnt down for growing crops please protect our mangrove forests they are our soldiers to fight cyclones and storms please take care of our biosphere homes to big and small creatures forests grasslands oceans deserts all temples of life on earth